Good morning everyone. It's Thursday and we're going to continue on with our rounding that we were looking at yesterday. Yesterday we started with rounding whole numbers, today we're rounding decimals. Remember rounding is about making numbers simpler so that they're easy to use and rounding is also though keeping the number close to its original value so that the number is still quite accurate for our purposes. Alright, let's have a look at rounding tenths. When we're rounding to the nearest one, um, there won't be any decimals, so we only need a whole number answer. It requires that understanding of place value. So when we're rounding to the nearest one, we have to identify which ones fall either side of the number we're dealing with. So if we're looking at one decimal four or one and four tenths, it's between one and two. When you see it on this number line here, you can see it's closer to one, so it's rounded down. That number there, the 1, is always, or the, the uh, whole number there at the beginning is always what we should start with on our number line. Alright, 5 and 7 tenths is between 5 and 6. And it's closer to 6, it's rounded up. 9 and 5 tenths, well that's another example, sorry boys and girls, another example is where we are halfway, and when we know it's halfway, we always round up. So 9 and 5 tenths rounds to 10. 6 and 8 tenths, you know what, there must be a 2 missing over here, 26 and 8 tenths, that should read, is between 26 and 27, so 26 and 8 tenths rounds up to 27, 161 and 1 tenth is between 161 and 162, it's closer to 161, so it's rounded down. Alright, we're going to see if you can apply that understanding yourself to this exercise. Remember, if it ends in Five tenths, we round up. So all of these answers should be whole numbers. You look at the number and you compare the number immediately after the decimal point, the number in the tenths place value to five. If it's less than five, round down. If it's more than five, round up. All right, pause the video and do this as exercise. Have a good go. All right, let's see how you went. All right, here are the answers. One and eight tenths is rounded to two, or if you wanted to put a decimal point in, two decimal zero. So both answers are the same. They're correct, no matter which way you write it. So pause each of those and have a look. See how you went. Mark your work. Make sure you mark it. All right, let's hope you got 12 out of 12 there. All right, let's move on. This time, we're still rounding to the nearest one, but instead of it just being tenths, we're looking at two decimal place values, so tenths and hundredths. Money is the most common place that we encounter decimals to two places, and so it's often easy to think of these in terms of money. And if you are thinking it in terms of money, you're comparing it to that idea of 50 or 50 cents to see if your number should be rounded up or rounded down. So 2 and 67 hundredths, or if you wanted to think of it in terms of money, $2.67, it's between 2 and $3. The 67 hundredths, or 67 cents if it was money, is bigger than 50, larger than 50, so it's going to be rounded up to 3. 14 and 29 hundredths is between 14 and 15, but closer to 14, so rounding down. And 35 and 50 hundredths, is between 35 and 36. 50 is always rounded up, so it rounds up to 36. You need to apply that understanding to this exercise. I did include it as money, so round these to the nearest dollar, which, if they were whole numbers, I'd say round to the nearest one. Pause the video and do this task. Let's check your work. Here are the answers. $1.31 is rounded to a dollar. $4.89 is close to $5. $8.53 close to $9 and so on through. So pause and correct your work. Make sure you are marking it. Tick saw. Write in the correct answer if you were wrong. So you can have a look later on.
Okay, now rounding decimals can get a little bit harder. Instead of rounding to the nearest whole number, I'm actually going to have you round to the nearest tenth. So I do want one decimal place. I want a tenths place value in there. This is a bit of an extension for you. But to do this, you need to look at the hundredths place value. And I've underlined the hundredths here. And if I've underlined two, the hundredths is the first one. The hundredths is the first one. If there's only one underlined, I've underlined the hundredths place value. If it's um, a five, if it's only one underlined, or 50 if I've underlined two, then we're going to round up. Okay, so round each of these numbers to the nearest tenth, but all you have to do this time is circle the correct answer. So work out if three and 131 thousandth is closer to three and one tenth, or three and two tenths. Again, think about this one and compare it to five. All right, pause the video and complete this task. Let's check your work. Okay, so three and 131 thousandths. Well, because I've gone to thousandths, halfway from between three and four would be three and 500 thousandths. It's much less than that. So it will round down to three and one tenth. This is, I'll remind you, an extension exercise. So this is really sorting you out and how well you understand your place value. This is a tougher exercise. All right, let's see how you went on the next one. The eight is what you're looking at here. And so is it closer to the next number or the previous number? And eight is bigger than halfway, so it's rounded up to five and five tenths. Seven and nine tenths is the next answer. Four and seven tenths. Seven and seven tenths. 21 and 8 tenths, 50 and 9 tenths, or 50 and 90 hundredths if you wanted to have it as two places, 64 and 6 tenths, and 12 and 9 tenths. Now, as I said, it's a bit of a tougher exercise. If you're unsure with any of these, you can always uh, flick me off an email and ask me for more lessons on this area because I think there are some people who are doing very well with it, but there's some people who will find this still a bit tricky. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you did well. Hope your understanding of decimals has improved. I hope your understanding of rounding has improved. All right, have a great rest of the day, and we'll talk to you soon. Ah, that's right, I just remembered tomorrow I am going to send out some maths, and it's going to be a little bit of a practice test. Uh, to see how you're going. So it's not a formal assessment, but I would like you to do it. And um, it'll give you a bit of an idea of how you're going. And I'd like it even more if you can attach it into an email and send it back to me. All right, guys, expect that one tomorrow. Thanks for that. Bye now.